Okay, today we're going to go over the biomechanics of the shoulder. It's really important for this series on the shoulder because we have to understand when we're rehabbing the shoulder what's happening with the patient. Typically we're dealing with the most common conditions of impingement syndrome or bicipital tendonitis, simple bursitis, or even if a patient's recovering from a post-surgical operation with arthroscopy where they've had their rotator cuff repaired or their labrum repaired, we have to keep in mind what's happening inside the shoulder with the mechanics to make sure we're, we're cueing the patient correctly when they're doing their exercises. So let's just, just go over a quick, simple uh, biomechanical explanation. So this is a model of the right shoulder. So it would sit over here like this. This is the collarbone. This will be the humeral bone, which is your arm bone. And this is the scapula right here. So this is a four joint complex. The SC joint is the only joint that holds the whole arm onto the skeleton. It sits right here. All the other attachments are muscle. So when we're working with the patients, we have to make sure that the joint here works correctly and we don't get a whole lot of extra movement with the shoulder blade. It's really important to watch this as the patient is working and then you got to give the patient the cues to make sure that they can recorrect it. So what we're looking at here are two principles of gliding and rolling. And if we use a ball like this, the ball rolls on the surface. So in this instance here, if you have an axis of rotation, and then here's going to be the opposite side of the joint. So this is the scapula part here. The ball will roll up, meaning that you'll get a rolling effect as the arm elevates like this, the ball will roll up in the joint and if you had a dot here and a dot here, those two pieces are going to roll up. So it will roll up like that. Okay? And then what happens, there's a bone right up in here and these are where the tendons are right in here. So if the ball rolls up and the bone, as it's elevating, if it rolls up in the joint, then it pinches the tendons and the bursa. If that's happening while the patient's exercising, that's a problem. It needs to be corrected. One of the ways it gets corrected is by gliding. And gliding is when the ball doesn't move, but it glides like this. Now, that can happen inside the joint as well. So if this is the opposite side of the joint, this is the scapula, here's the axis of rotation, here's the acromion bone up here. Once the ball rolls up, or it may even glide up, it still has to glide back down. It doesn't roll back down. So the axis of rotation here moves opposite, okay? So here, this will be sliding or gliding up and down. So the ball will move like this. It won't roll like that. But if it rolls up, it needs to glide back down. So if it rolls up and pinches the tendon, the strength of the supraspinatus muscle has to glide it back down so it stays in the center of this joint. If not, it stays high in the joint, it pinches the tendon. And the main muscle that does that is your rotator cuff. And that rotator cuff comes and inserts on the scapular bone. So it's the supraspinatus muscle in this part that makes that pull happen. So that inserts out in here, the muscle gets pulled back in here. And this is one of the more common torn rotator cuff muscles. So if we work this correctly, if the patient begins to see too much rolling up where it creates an impingement of the tendon, if we can get that muscle stronger, then it will make it glide back down. So it may roll up initially, but then it the strength of that muscle makes it glide back down. That's really important biomechanics for the shoulder. And if we do it correctly and the patient can understand it, and they can see how their shoulder moves, they can recorrect it themselves, and then they get a much better workout even in the gym or in a rehab setting, and that's what we're going to do. So in this series, as you go on, 
you'll see range of motion exercises, you'll see strength exercises with dumbbells, medicine balls, and bands. And so pay attention to these exercises and you'll see and hear the cues that we're looking for with patients when we do that. So go on to the next set of series for range of motion and let's continue with the shoulder.